This week, Ghana's finance minister addressed the nation, provided an update on the country's economic recovery efforts. Now, while the minister highlighted progress and growth, the opposition has voiced skepticism, accusing the government of manipulating figures and failing, really, to address the high cost of living effectively. On Hot Issues today, we will scrutinize these growth figures and their real impact on your lives and livelihoods. Now, will the second half of the fiscal year bring any tangible improvements to you? I am Kemini Amano, and today I sit with a member of the Finance Committee of Parliament. He has been outspoken in challenging government's narrative. He's called out the government, and on many occasions, to be honest with the public. My guest is Bogotanga Central MP, Isaac Adungo. Honorable, you're welcome to Hot Issues. It's good to see you yeah. again. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Yeah, for those who have been watching us mm. from, the, uh, from the beginning, this mm. is an encore. Uh, okay. to, to us uh, some time ago. Yeah. But let's, let's look into the uh, budget review statement uh, that was, you know, addressed to Parliament uh, recently. Overall, uh, the finance minister seems to paint a picture of uh, recovery and even in some cases growth in all sectors of the economy. Uh, what's your evaluation of that assertion? Well, you expect him to paint a picture, uh, but the story is in our pockets. Uh, we face it every day in the market. We face it every day when we take our cars to the filling station. So we know what the economy is. He doesn't have to tell me what the economy is now. Uh, the fact still remains that after he delivered the statement, he went and bought fuel at a little 15 cities. That remains a fact. The fact still remains that if today he has to travel, and he needs to go out there and buy dollars, he will, have to, he will need 16 cities to buy one dollar. So that reality remains. He cannot change it. Mm, I see. Uh, but, but let's look at the numbers presented. Those growth figures, those expansion in GDP, uh, the cuts to expenditure, are those numbers real? Or, you, you know, because they don't reflect in our lives, we cannot believe those numbers. So you remember last year at Media, they told you the economy was growing at 4.2. Suddenly, after the media, the economy went into reverse gear. We ended at 2.3. So media numbers, they will pick and choose. When they are comfortable, they will quote uh, first quarter numbers. If they are not comfortable, they quote second quarter. But at the end of the year, that's where we see the full size of the frog. Uh, like I just said, last year when they came, they said the economy had rebounded and we're growing at... 4.2 percent and i say hey you don't you don't measure growth like that in the end what do we get 2.3 so let's wait and see what happens at the beginning at the, at end, the end of, at the, end of, the, of year. the year for me expenditure cuts what does it mean when he says that he's cutting us what does it mean because we have given you an appropriation mm -hmm. which is a law that sets a, a limit uh, what do you call it uh, 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 an upper limit for you. If you really feel that you want to cut the numbers, as we see, you genuinely have to cut the numbers, you will come and amend the appropriation. Then we know that you have a law that now tightens you up. Mm. As it is now, the only expenditure that is known in our public system is appropriation. Mm, but they say, they, you know, it's a good thing that they are not asking for more money at a time when they could be asking for supplementary. Par and so we should be happy, Par but the minority is not happy. Parliament doesn't have money sitting in Speaker's office. There is no warehouse in Parliament where we stock money. When you come to tell us that you need more money, you go and do the work to get the money. You probably will come and say we should allow you other revenue measures to go and collect the money. And if you are struggling with the existing revenue measures that we have given you, what is the sense? In any case, who brings a budget? in which you have debt service of about 100 billion, which as a result of debt restructuring, you will not need to pay that money this year. You probably will start servicing 2026 and the rest. They should be giving back to the people of Ghana over 100 billion that is no more required in the appropriation so that Ghanaians will see that uh, there are no more paying Where, the where's taxes. Where is this 100 billion from? It's debt service in the budget. Mm. 
And we know that because of DDEP, because of uh, the, the, uh, our arrangement with our bilateral creditors, arrangement with uh, commercial creditors, and Eurobond holders, we have, we have had to defer that payment uh -huh. to somewhere 2026. Right. And yet it is sitting in the appropriation as though we are going to spend that money. Okay, you tax the people. W what is the problem with that? You know. The problem I have is that suddenly 100 billion of expenditure is not going to materialize. Okay, and you are taxing the people to the bone because you have to pay 100 billion. Now you are not paying that 100 billion. Why are you still collecting the money from the people? Shouldn't you now be reducing the, tax the taxes? Mm. Shouldn't you now be saying that it's because of this debt service, that is why I ask you to pay e-levy, okay? It is because of this debt service, that is why I impose the number of taxes that I impose on you. Mm. Now that you are not going to pay, it simply means I'm not going to incur that expenditure. And the money that I'm collecting from you for purpose of that expenditure, take it back because I'm not going to need it. Right. But some <coughs> analysts have said that the fact that we've been able to you know, renegotiate our debts and save ourselves uh, so and so amount doesn't mean we actually have the money. It only means that we won't be paying. So we may not necessarily uh, be able to gather that money from our resources. Are you suggesting that the budget was not credible? I didn't put those numbers there. And there is what we call budget credibility, which is exactly what we set out to do when we pass the Public Financial Management Act, to bring some certainty and credibility. You are telling me that you budgeted for 100 billion that you knew you cannot raise the money? Is that what you are saying? If that's the case, they should say it. Mm. To the best of my knowledge, they have not told me that their budget numbers are wrong. So we should have that money sitting down? Yeah, we, should, we, should, we are raising that money. Mm -hmm. In any case, even if we are not raising through taxes, we are borrowing through the roof. Okay? We are borrowing close to 40 billion a quarter. So if we don't need that money, why are we still borrowing? As we speak, there is a major fear mongering that they are pursuing in order to convince the IMF to give them the opportunity to borrow $172 million. Okay? So they will, keep, they will tell you that, oh, there, there, there are problems in the Sahelian region, so we need to protect our borders. We need, to, mm. we need money for our marine protection. Fear mongering. Nobody is coming to attack Ghana. And they are taking that issue to the IMF? Yes. If you read the, the staff report, mm -hmm. the staff report is very clear that the government is asking them to give them a no objection to raise $172 million. So these are the type of people we have. And, and, and they plan to raise that through the IMF using... No, it's, it's supposed to be a commercial loan. A commercial you see, loan. The, IMF, the IMF puts a cap. Mm -hmm. In fact, they have frozen any... Uh, uh, commercial loans to be raised by government, except multilateral and other concessionary loans. Those concessionary loans, they are using it for their budget and other things. But they want to tell the IMF that somehow or another, Ghana is going to be attacked by a landlocked country. Eh? Do you have coast going to the, to, to, to the Sahelians? Mm -hmm. Niger, do they have a sea there? Burkina Faso, do you have the sea there? Mali, do you have a sea there? Why are you painting them as a corridor through which people come through the sea? Oh, but there's no denying also that the Sahelian terrorists pose a, a, a risk to Ghana. And, and I'm, I'm suggesting that they are not coming through the seas. Okay. Because they don't have access to the sea. Okay? Tell me which, which, which route through the sea somebody will come from Niger. Or somebody will come from Burkina Faso. Mm. Or come from Mali. Why are you creating fear and panic when none exists because you want the opportunity to raise money? And, and why, I mean, is the, why, why do you think the government would want to do that, you know, create a problem, a non-existent problem, just so they can get money? I have not said that I'm thinking they are doing That is what they are doing. It is in the IMF document. Right. So uh, what I want to understand is what could be the reason the government would want to do that? I'm not in their mind. All I know is that you agreed with IMF that you are not going to borrow on commercial basis again. Mm -hmm. Suddenly you want to pass through the back door and provide an excuse. You remember recently they were trying to raise money at GMPC. And we told them that that would be against the IMF program. And they called back. Mm -hmm. That is who they are. I see. They are, they, all they know is that it's how to borrow. But they don't know how to pay when they borrow. How to pay. I, 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 I want to roll us back. Uh, the government says that, look, we won't be spending more money 
uh, we are cutting back on expenditure. The government that we know, does it have the capacity to do that in the first place? I just told you that there's a law he's operating with, and that is the Appropriations Act. In the Appropriations Act, it's not been amended. So as far as the laws of our land is concerned, what was given him is still intact. There's not, you remember when they went to Peduasi to go and drink tea and came back to tell us that they had cut 30% of expenditure. Mm. You remember? What happened in the end? In the end, overspent. Governor Addison is here lamenting profusely from its own statement, okay? Trying to give the chronology of events mm -hmm. that led to Ghana being where we are. And you can read this document from front to back. You won't see him mentioning COVID-19 or Russia-Ukraine war as some of our reasons. And I just want to read a few paragraphs for you to see. Okay, he says, it is important to put the Bank of Ghana's 2022 financial results in proper context with a clear statement of the problem that Ghana faced uh -huh. and the chronology of events in Ghana since 2019. Did you hear what he said? Since 2019. 2019. Right. In 2019, have you, have you heard of any word called COVID or Russia-Ukraine war uh -huh. and the governor? says that the problem started from 2019. By your reading... What he's doing, he was putting the blame squarely at fiscal authority. In other words, he was putting the blame squarely mm -hmm. on government and not the Bank of Ghana. And saying that it was because you went on a reckless fiscal expansion. And even when you had the opportunity in 2021 to put together 2022 mm -hmm. budget, you rather went more expansionary even than before. And that the problem started in 2019. Right, which, which is why now we have the IMF to help us deal with all those unnecessary expansions. So again, I was going to ask, by your readings, uh, what would you score our fiscal management at this time? Well, let me, let me put on record that the MPP has never demonstrated capacity and competence in managing IMF, ICF programs. They are only talented at failure. That's what they are. Why do you say that? Are, I'll, I'll explain to you Yeah, why. please do. Because the indicators won't, won't say oh, the same, won't uh, paint the same I'll, picture. I'm, I'm coming. You see, this is the IMF country report. Number 19 stroke 97 in April 2019. Okay. In this report, the government of Ghana, uh -huh. under the signature of Ken Oforiata, in April 2019, don't forget that in 2018, they wrote to the IMF to extend the program. They said, oh, we have come. But they gave you up to December 2019. Okay. By 20, April 2019, just four months into the extension they gave you, this is what they wrote to the IMF. In light of the resolve and commitment shown in implementing macroeconomic policies and reforms, the government of Ghana requests the IMF executive board to waive the non-observance of performance criteria on the wage bill, the net international reserves, uh, reserves of Bank of Ghana for both end June and uh -huh. end December 2018. Okay, what is, this simply means is that they went to them and said, look, this IMF program is too tough. Mm -hmm. It's like a child who is registered to write exams. He arrives and said, the people are me also. It's too tough, so right. we, beg, we beg you. Can you forgive us those performance criteria because we can't meet them. And let us go and live our lives. Wave non-observance of performance criteria. And what were the problems we were trying to solve with the, the IMF program at the time? The key one was to improve net international reserves. Right. In order to provide the forex buffers to support the city. That was one of the key mm -hmm. policies. Two, because we had come out of the transition from the universal salary structure, which President Kufo signed, into the, what we now call uh, the new wage structure, okay? The wage bill was a problem that needed to be addressed in order to ensure fiscal sustainability. That was one. Then three, we were required to prevent the central bank from printing money to give to government. Okay, these were the three key pillars, and you fail all of them. You see, by, by, by November 2018, uh -huh. Bank of Ghana was printing money. After he, it had already signed 
a memorandum of understanding with Bank of Ghana between the Ministry of Finance and Bank of Ghana uh -huh. under the direction of the IMF not to lend money to government. They had spent 10 billion of printed money on the government. So I, I was going to ask if indeed they have failed. I'm coming. Or, I'm or coming. So, so clearly, when they went, they left the IMF. Uh -huh. They did not complete the program. They ran away because they couldn't pass. Okay? Right. As we speak now, eh? uh -huh. this program is only how many months old? It's about two years old. Uh, yes. Let me tell you that they are already back to their old ways. Missing targets. Which one have they missed? Ah, I will tell you all of them. Okay. One, one, we're supposed to ensure zero accumulation of arrears okay. throughout the program mm -hmm. because the government of Ghana had accumulated over 45 billion arrears. 21 billion of it was owed to the energy sector. So they said, look, from now on, be current on your arrears. Don't accumulate any further areas throughout the program. Mm. You know what they did? They, by as throughout the program, they already have accumulated 4.5 billion areas. I see. But but I'm coming. in, I'm in their statement, didn't they say that they had also cleared some areas oh, up to I said new areas. Don't accumulate new areas. Okay. But deal with the old areas over seven years. Does that tell you that you should add more areas? And you have added 10 billion, almost 4.5 billion arrears. Right, you, so uh, what I'm also trying I, to say is you that... Wait, let me take you through, you understand. Right, go ahead. The other one is that NIB, there were issues with the financial, residual issues with the financial sector, mm -hmm. including NIB, okay? They were, to, by March of this, of, of uh, we are now in what? In, in July. In, in July. Yes. We are talking four months down the line. Mm -hmm. When they were supposed to meet this target, so four months now, they haven't met it. And it is that design and begin the implementation of a credible, comprehensive, and cost-effective plan to address NIB's solvency uh, challenges by end uh -huh. 2022. So first, just design the strategy. And by 20, 2024, you should implement it fully. By March, they have not done it. As we speak now, there is no draft document before cabinet. For that? Yes. Then... They are supposed to present, they are supposed to make, present proposals to cabinet uh -huh. to approve recommendations for amending the Bank of Ghana Act to give Bank of Ghana better autonomy. As of today, by the end of May, the deadline was May ending. May ending, there was, no, there was nothing like that. A doctor has given you a prescription. You have gone to do the test and you have returned with test results. The diagnosis is that you must take this pill up morning, afternoon, evening. Otherwise, your madness will come again. Uh -huh. you, are, you, you took it the morning. In the afternoon, you didn't take. In the evening, you didn't take. If you see you sweeping the market, should we be surprised? Should we be surprised? This is the people. They, I'm saying that they are very talented at failure. They don't have a track record of ever successfully managing an ESF, uh, ECF program in Ghana. Mm, I see. Ha, ha, you know, notwithstanding, we would look at some of the measures that they have uh, outlined over here, uh, looking into the future up until the, the end of the fiscal year. Mm. You're watching Hot Issues. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Issues. Today I'm sitting with the Member of Parliament for Bogatanga Central, who is also a ranking member on Parliament's Finance Committee. Again, thank you so much for uh, your patience. The government outlined a lot of things that it is proud of, some of which we have mentioned, like, you know, the uh, debt restructuring and what it has saved the, the, the country, you know, monies that, and, and pushing some of our debt payments into the future. They are very, really proud of that. They also look at some of the macroeconomic indicators uh, they talk about inflation, they talk about uh, 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 interest rates, I believe. And, and then one of the things they also look at is the CD depreciation, which you say that uh, the CD appreciation, in their opinion, because based on how they had put it together, uh, the CD would have appreciated over time. Um, what are your thoughts on those assessments that the finance minister put before you? So the measures that you presented to us are uh, basically uh, some IMF program measures, right? And so if you want to improve on the management of the economy, uh -huh. you need to make sure that you follow the IMF program to the letter. We haven't reached anywhere you are stumbling. Inflation, 
Let me show you the inflation that we left for them. Mm -hmm. Your mama, even after how many years, eight years, still has a better record. Imagine your mama has ruled for another eight years. Uh -huh. You see where it would have been? Inflation, okay? When your mama was living, what was the inflation? The inflation was about 15%. Uh -huh. You remember that? These people took it to 54%. It will forever be their worst record in Ghana. It won't change. They're hoping to bring it back to 15%. But it, you see, the point is that I didn't take it there. Do you get it? It will forever remain that that is your record. And that any time we are giving you an economy, we should be minded that you are capable of taking it to 54%. That is a, the downside of trusting you. That you will mess up our life with 54% inflation. But you see, if you say that now your inflation is 23%, let me ask you a question. If I put a bag of rice on your mm -hmm. head and ask you to run, do you know when you were not carrying the rice, you were running faster? I, I should think so. Good. So when you add one speak. bag, your running will slow, right? If I add another one, you will now be struggling. It will be slower. Good. So if you move from a base of 15% and you gallop to 54%, you cannot continue galloping. Now that you are carrying a lot of load, we we'll call that the base drift effect. The fact that you have pushed the base by 54%, you can only slow down. Do you get the point? Mm -hmm. The cumulative effect is that the price adjustment that have occurred overboard is about 54% one year plus 23% another year. Added together, you get 77%. That is how much you have de destroyed the value of, of any income. Mm. Do you get the point? Are you proud of destroying the value of Ghanaian workers by 77% in two years? Right, so, I mean, by your analogy. Um, yeah, so that's the point I'm making. They have no gain, you have not made any gains. Right, so, uh, uh, so hence my question. Mm. By your analogy, whatever we are seeing as a decline mm. in the inflation is really not because the government is doing anything good. I don't see what you call decline. You see, you have to recover for me to see any gain. If you take the city from, say, four cities to 16, the only time I have seen that you have done better is that you have recovered the system to the point that it is now maybe eight cities. In fact, eight, you know, they said that they were going to break the eight and the dollar, the dollar broke it faster than them, right? Now, they are around 16. And you tell me that the rate at which it is going up from 16 is slower than the way it was going. You have not recovered the loss that I have sustained. Mm. The businessmen who need a dollar to do their business, they are not getting it at a cheaper price. Is that recovery possible? Oh, yes. How? Because if you are, you see, it is the reason why when they miss, when they miss a target, like net change in net international reserves, you should mm -hmm. be worried. The issue of the currency, as we speak today, right. is liquidity in the market. If you and I are going out there to buy dollars and we'll go and the dollar is available, will you, will you continue to buy it? If you don't need it, you won't buy it. Uh -huh. If you are going to hold it as a speculator, there's no incentive because people will get the dollars to buy anyway, so the price will come down. So you must work towards improving the liquidity of the currency. And you must take the pill of the IMF that says, don't be throwing your dollars into the market, but use it to build the reserves. And you miss that target. Are you saying that the government is lying to us with the stat statistics and the facts and figures? I am saying that these are facts reported by the IMF own staff. Have they disputed it? So help us I am understand. saying that I am not here to speak the language government is speaking of. I am here to speak the language of the referee you and I trust. Well, but, but, so you, you I don't, mean you're on the finance Fine, property, you don't trust right? my figures. You don't trust Minister of Finance figures, but at least you trust IMF. And that's why I gave you the pages to go and read. Anybody watching who can pick the IMF staff report, go to page 48, 49. These things are all there. I'm not the one bringing them up. So, so here's the other thing. What does it mean then when government, say, uh, government says that import cover is now uh, 3.1 months gross international reserves? You see, I told you, don't be talking gross. No, gross. no, no, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. let, let me finish. Yeah. Because this is what they say. Gross international reserves reached 3.1 <coughs> months of import cover as of the end of June 2024 against 2.5, same period last year. I mean, when we look at the, the two figures and the two years, 
on the surface. It would appear that we have seen an improvement, uh, you know, in, in, in that gross international reserves. What does it mean? Does it mean also what, that what the, the money that does not belong to us, like the Heritage Fund and what all the other ones? What it means is that they are using a standard that is, that is not relevant in assessing your vulnerability. In accessing your country's external vulnerability and the ability of your central bank to have the shock absorbers to intervene in the market, you don't use gross reserves. You use net international reserves. From the language of government's plans on domestic revenue mobilization, are you expecting them to introduce some taxes? So, you stay within your expenditure and stay within the approved envelope of financing your budget. Suggest that your revenue is going to stay at what you programmed. If your revenue were going to be more than you programmed, you have to offset it by the financing. You won't borrow more. You will borrow less by that. But you didn't touch your borrowing. It means that you are still there. What it means that all that he's saying is English. What he presented to us uh -huh. that we approved, nothing has changed. That's what he's saying. You are simply speaking the same language that you came to speak in December last year, November, December last year. Uh -huh. Okay? And so, if the revenues are indeed going to go up, and you are going to get more money than we have allowed you to spend, you have to come with a supplementary budget in order to be able to spend that additional money. Why he didn't come with a, a supplementary budget? Because, because, don't to because spend. he's not. No, so what is he going to do with the money? He's not going to raise any additional money. That's why he didn't come. Even even with the road tolling coming back. Oh, road toll twenty twenty five for by which time they are in the house watching us. Oh, you are not aware. <laughs> twenty twenty five, they will be your friends watching you every day. So how can you bring a road toll when you are out of government? How? Mm. You will be out of government. We also know that the IMF country report indicated that. Uh, you know, they foresee the government bringing back the, uh, you know, VAT on power retail. Perhaps it could be one of the ways they plan to raise revenue. Your thoughts on the return of, of, of power retail? So, VAT. so you agree with me that they don't have any measure to increase revenue? Okay. If electricity, which you have increased by over 120% since the IMF program started, you still want to add another layer of taxes on electricity. I wish them well. Labor unions are waiting for them. Mm. Hmm? Everybody is waiting for them. They should try it and bring it back. I see. But so clearly they don't have a solution. Oh, they it, don't? Ah, where is the solution? From what he has said, I haven't seen any new revenue measure. Oh, but if, if they are able to implement these things. Which ones? Um, let me tell Reinstituting you. the integrated property tax system. Oh, it's in uh, the budget already with an amount of money as what they are going to raise already included in the budget. Uh -huh. Has he brought you a new figure other than the one in the budget? There's no figure. We're, we're, we're only half year in the so fiscal I'm year. We're that, only half, so, halfway in the no, fiscal year. No, but I'm year. saying that you cannot spend what you have not been approved to spend. So if your, your property rate suddenly is going to be more because of what you are saying, what are you going to do with it? You cannot spend it. Uh -huh. Okay, so all that he's mentioning is repeating how he convinced us to allow property rate. Nothing has changed. So let me tell you. Uh -huh. You see, he said uh, they should expand the the tax net. Yes. Do you remember a couple of uh, a year or two ago, there was one vice president and economic messiah who said that by giving Ghana cars mm, to school children. Suddenly, he has brought over 16 million Ghanaians into the tax net. Mm -hmm. Those people you brought into the tax net, where is the money? You are still now talking about 2,000. Yeah. You mentioned 16,000. And I asked you, that net, is it Amani that is inside or Ajani? But how, could, how could we not say they are already paying their taxes when they tell us that the GRA that, uh, hold on, you know when they tell us that the GRA has exceeded its, its revenue collection target? It means that people in, are paying in, taxes. In, in this country, there was once a chairman of GRA board who took the workers to church hmm, to go and thank God for his exceeding the target. You remember that man, Professor Adai, went to church. And praise God with the workers for exceeding the target. When they came back, 
The labor unions wrote a proposal to him and said that we have exceeded the target, so can you pay us our bonus? He said, no, you know I was lying. We never exceeded any target. This is the type of people you are dealing with. So you don't believe that? I am saying that you are in this country. It happened. Eh? The labor unions now wrote to him and said, having exceeded the target, can you pay us the corresponding bonus in relation to our collective bargaining agreement? Mm -hmm. Suddenly the man said, but you know you didn't achieve any target. We all know that we're lying. These are the people who are suddenly now exceeding another one. Once beaten, twice shy. Mm. They lack credibility. Right. And in spite of that, <laughs> you know, as part of the control measures, we know that uh, they have decided to implement some key government programs and pump some money into <coughs> that. One of those uh, government programs, or I mean... Uh, let, me, let me go through that. They talked about, uh, and, and you keep asking, really. You keep asking where does the money go and all that. Mm -hmm. But there are key co uh, government pro programs will tell us where the money went, like in roads and highways, railways development, uh, transport, employment and labor relations, uh, elections and civic education. Uh, those are the places the money went to. And national health insurance. Capitation grants going up from five cities to 15. Uh, the school feeding program expansion. So the money has been used for all of these things. Okay, so that was your budget. You put your budget together. You had social spending. School feeding program is a social spending. Mm -hmm. Free is a social spending. Okay, uh, health insurance, targeting the vulnerable is social spending. What does the IMF staff report say? Staff report says that indicative target on social spending missed March 2024, missed June 2024. Who are you lying to? The measure of your spending on social services is captured as an indic indicator in your program, in your IMF program. And I have made says that you have missed. You didn't even spend the money we're expecting you to spend to help the poor. And you are here saying that you have spent on the poor. Who are you lying to? This is not me. This is IMF. And again, I refer you to page 48 and 49 of the IMF staff report. Mm -hmm. We missed the target on social spending. So who are they spending on? Ghosts? Who are they giving the money to? But, but even on the NHIS, we can talk about recently when they, you know, the government decided to step up and then cover a uh, course for dialysis for the next six months. Sorry, At least I that's something I, I, don't, I don't wish you dialysis. But never go there. Just pray that you don't end up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That so-called policy, have you seen one person benefiting from it? Go to the hospital, take your cameras. Don't fall for the propaganda. All of that put together, IMF says that you have missed your social spending budget. Target. I'm not the one saying it. It's IMF that is saying it. Mm. I just want you to clarify the issue on rationalizing expenditure. Um, I mean, based on what you, what you have said so far, I, I get the impression that you don't think government will be able to do that at all. What I think is that in this budget, I expected the media review for minister to introduce a policy that will let them push the debt service that we are not paying into a sinking fund, okay, and build up buffers so that in future, when there is time for us to repay our debt, the money will be there to pay. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is what a prudent economic manager does. You don't go in the market, send the hundred billion to go for election-related expenditures just because you want to win an election. That is what has happened. Right, so practically, <coughs> what kind of policy would you have liked to see? Like, I have what, just what, told policy, you, what policy would it be? What a, policy is that? A, a poli no, we have a sinking fund. Uh -huh. You have not put money uh -huh. in a sinking fund in a long time. Now, suddenly somebody says, uh, whatever you owe me now, I am not going to collect it. Start paying in 2026. Any responsible person will be putting the money into the sinking fund, into an account. So that by the time they say, ah, come and pay, uh -huh. you are no longer going there to say that I didn't prepare. Do you understand? That is a major policy intervention that I expected to see in this budget. Then we would have seen that we have learned our lessons and that we are getting ready not to default again. But you know these people, they believe that 2025 they are out of here. Okay, whatever happens to us, Ghana, money, my
Is the NDC, NDC ready to take up an economy like this? The, as NDC, you have the NDC is the only political party in the history of Ghana. And from our ancestors, Terry John Rawlings, Kwesi, uh, Professor Kwesi Boche, name them. Some of them are still alive. Toto mm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. You remember them? Hmm? We brought this economy from the doldrums in the 1983-1984. What we are seeing today is not, one, it's not even 10% of what we did. In those days, as a young boy, mm -hmm. I killed several kilometers to buy just bread, sugar, and milk for my family. Okay? Mm -hmm. When you just walk across, you buy milk, you buy tea, you buy... And we revived that economy and right. brought it to where we are. We are the only people who are able to manage these type of programs, not those people who go to ask for another one year, and when they give them one year, they come back to say that, as I'm saying, open me 10 years, me too. And you are able it. to do that with a that 742 the, billion dollar debt? The 742 billion debt is not going to be paid one day. Uh -huh. Okay? We have a program to ensure that we grow this economy. We have a, a program to ensure that our youth are giving jobs, not mobile phones that they pay one city, one city, two city, two city. We want to give them jobs. We want to create employment for them. We want to give them livelihood. We want to make sure that there's food for the people to eat. Okay? Now, it appears to me that the unemployment that is escalating from 8.7% that John Mahama left uh -huh. to 14 point something percent is intentional. The reason is, let's make our youth unemployed and vulnerable so that we can prey on them and exploit them for elections. Otherwise, your children are unemployed. Your children are struggling to buy food. Come and tell them what you will do for them. You say, oh, I'll give you mobile phones every month. Pay one city, one city, two city, two city. The Gen Z's don't like Yamso. The Gen Z's are waiting for iPhone 16. The Gen Z's are waiting for uh, 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 Ultra, uh, what do you call it, Samsung Ultra, 25. Mm -hmm. That's what they're waiting for. Yep. Those phones are bought at 25, 30,000. If we are to be paying one city, two city, one city, two cities, by the time we finish paying, we can't even find Dr. Baumia's bones in his grave. So what, what will the NDC do about the debt? We will restructure. The, the debt is already restructured, right? Indeed. Indeed. And I've told you, when we launch our manifesto, you will see the safeguards that we are bringing to grow this economy. Uh -huh. Give we us, just, give we, us we, a we few. Just, we just mentioned... One, which is, which is a cross-cutting policy, uh -huh. okay? So, 24-hour economy is not agriculture. It is not industry. It is not uh, 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 tourism. 24-hour uh -huh. economy is a cross-cutting policy that is supposed to unleash growth in uh -huh. every sector. You mainstream it. So, when we come to agriculture, how do we ensure that we, are, we, we introduce 24-hour economy? When it comes to industry, how do we introduce 24-hour economy? When it comes to road construction, how do we bring... So 24-hour economy is a cross-cutting policy. Okay? Mm. So far, we haven't heard from Would them. Would you yet. restructure your debt any differently from what they have done? The debt has already been restructured. I, I mean, like, if you were in that position, would you have done it differently? If we were in that position, we would not even get to debt distress. So the question of restructuring wouldn't arise. Wouldn't arise. Because we are very good. You see, let me show you some few statistics. When John Mama was president, he exited with debt to GDP of 56%. Uh -huh. Okay? He exited with a debt accumulation ratio of 22%. These people push it all the way to 35%. Okay? Uh -huh. Our debt service was about 50 billion. They pushed it now to almost 100 billion. Okay? We were paying all right. these debt. Listen, we were paying all these debt. Never did we tell pensioners to forgo their investment. Never did we tell the market woman in Makwala to forgo. We paid them mm -hmm. their debt. We lived by the principle that government debt are risk-free. We made sure that we paid our debt. Right. And, still, right. and still managed to engage in the monumental uh, infrastructure development that we did. Mm -hmm. So we would have seen an economy growing faster. We would have seen an economy that is managed on the level of fiscal and external sustainability. Mm -hmm. See, you, when you are managing an economy, it is not just about putting numbers together. You have to manage an economy to make sure that your fiscal environment is sustainable, okay? You have to make sure that your external vulnerability is contained. Mm -hmm. 
you have to make sure that your monetary policy is solvent. That is Bank of Ghana. Right. Okay? As we speak today, Bank of Ghana's biggest problem is solvency. Mm. Okay? To the extent that even the central bank must be recapitalized. Hmm? Very well. Have so, you ever heard that in Ghana before? So, it's seven years. Have you ever seen a digitalization policy of government? Have you ever seen a blueprint? We are developing an integrated digitalization program mm -hmm. that is underpinned by the establishment of an innovation and digital fund. And when are we going to see your blueprint? Give, we are not in government yet, uh -huh. so we can only give you the contours of our ideas. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that our digitalization program will be inter interrelated. Okay, let me tell you what that means. You see, if you say you are digitalizing, and then you give me Ghana card, the Ghana card that you have, is it not your, your biometric data that is on the Ghana card? Eh? So I appear there myself. And you say, where is my Ghana card? Am I on the card or the card is on me? You, a properly functioning digitalized system, they will ask you to put your thumb print or take my, 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 my eyes. Right. And then they will see that others are don't standing there. By this one, look, how can you say that you have digitalized DVLA? Eh? You have digitalized uh, uh, pension. Mm. And yet your police officers are arresting cars on their bonnet. Oh, but you must have also I'm heard coming. the announcement. I'm, I'm coming. It's not an announcement. I'm making an analogy. You haven't seen your police officers chasing cars and jumping yeah, on their bonnet. But I'm also saying you must have heard the announcement that the, the police <laughs> will now just text you when you... you, 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 they, know, you they will text who? You, how are they going to you, text? No, when you make any offense how are they going on to the text? road. How, how are you going to text me? You don't know my number. How are you texting me? Well, Let me tell you. In, in places where there's digitalization, mm -hmm. when you jump a traffic light, mm, the, camera, the camera is connected to a central database. That camera will take a picture of your number plate. Isn't that what they plan I'm coming. to do? That ah, is exactly plan, after seven years. No, that saying, is what they, they, where, where they have the announced they will do. Oh, that is what they, now they, that they are going out, now they are suddenly announcing. After seven years, who is going to give them another year? Who? Who is going to give them that another one year? But they have six months ago. We, That's a lot we, of we built, we built, we built a data center. Okay? Uh -huh. Because we knew that digitalization requires a data center. Do you get it? Uh -huh. You came, you haven't used it. You rather went and gave it to a private businessman who is using it to make money. We set up a digital center where we were engaged in recruiting Ghanaian youth for business process outsourcing. Over 1,000 Ghanaians were sitting here in Ghana and working for companies in Germany, UK, and London. Okay? This man is just talking big English. You see, he will just get up here, the school feeding program, they are, inter they are introducing an enterprise resource plan. And I'm an accountant. Mm -hmm. I have worked with enterprise resource planners so many years now. I, I never heard that it is called digitalization. Guinness is using it. MTN is using it. Accra Brewery is used. Almost all the multinationals are using these enterprise resource plans. When school feeding program decides to introduce it, then Baumia will land there. We are digitalizing school feeding program. If you feed them with beans, we will know. If you feed them with gari, we will know. You see, that enterprise resource planner also has a model for payment. There's a payment model. Uh -huh. When you were feeding them, didn't you know that you have to press the payment model? How come you are not paying them? Right. How come you, are, you have... You have you introduced a resource, a, a enterprise resource planner, but you have forgotten to press the payment model and pay. Mm. And you are owing them over 300 million. Mm. That I, is not digitalization. One, one, one area I want <laughs> us to look at, but, you know, in, in my opinion, the finance minister glossed <laughs> over his energy. Yeah. Don't go away. Thanks for staying with us here on Hot Issues. My guest is ranking on Parliament's Finance uh, Committee, Isaac Adungo. Honourable, thank you so much for your patience. The energy sector, uh, there wasn't, I mean, it was hardly mentioned. It would appear that not much of a review was done there. Uh, do you have an inkling why that could be? You know, our country, sometimes they think that we have short memories. You remember not long ago, a certain presidential candidate campaign on electricity being more expensive than rent. Hmm? You remember that? Mm -hmm. Akufado and Baumia said electricity was more expensive than rent. Today, can you pay your electricity? That's why he won't talk about it. You see, ECG, 
when we signed the compact to revive ECG. You remember that when they came, Dr. Baumia spearheaded PDS. When he was asked to chair the meeting, that was to pre-qualify a company to run the assets of ECG. The, IMF, the, the compact, the Millennium Challenge compact that we signed, mm -hmm. required that our assets are so valuable that for any company that will take over, will take over those assets, that company must bring a triple A rated commercial bank guarantee. We don't even have one in Ghana yet. Mm -hmm. In Africa, if you are looking for triple A rated companies or banks, you probably will find one in South Africa. Okay? Mm -hmm. This man came and downgraded it to an insurance guarantee. And gave our asset to a company that didn't even have money to, to bring some capital upfront. Do you know in the IMF report, again I refer you to the staff report, mm -hmm. the auditors of ECG, after ECG made such losses, qualified the report. If I were the managing director or the board chairman mm -hmm. of ECG, I would have resigned long ago. Maybe he doesn't understand what it means for your law auditors to say that they cannot, they cannot rely on your account. They can't express mm. an opinion on your account and that they have qualified your account. What does that mean? What it means is that if you rely on those set of accounts, you do so to your own detriment. That the accounts have not been prepared consistent with internationally agreed principles and standards. And that those accounts likely are cooked and he cannot put his signature on that account. If I want to put my signature, then the material things that have been uh, misrepresented in the accounts, mm -hmm. I have to restate them to show my view of what the account should look like. We'll call it a qualification. And this is for what period? Their last report, their last audited account was mm -hmm. qualified. It's stated in the IMF staff report. It's not me saying it. Mm -hmm. Hmm? You came and said that, you see, your father left your house. Go and make good use of the house and make money. You go and say, oh, daddy, that house, the house is too big. Why is the house too big? The man gave you a lot of electricity to sell. Okay? Mm -hmm. We increased our generation capacity to about 5,000 megawatts. And when we did that, we realized that there were huge transmission losses within the grid code lines. So we started a program with Alain Francais de Développement, okay, to take money from them in order to retool our transmission lines, but also to provide the capacity for us to evacuate power from Ghana to our neighboring countries to sell for, for hard-earned foreign currency uh -huh. and to push the energy into the West Africa power pool. So we started from Prisia Huni Valley, retooled the lines to Kumasi, and built a bigger power station, transmission station there. That's the one uh, 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 Napo went to commission mm -hmm. and pretended that they, they came to do something. Then from there, we moved the lines and retooled the lines to Kintampo and built a bigger power station there. From there, we, we moved all the way to Tamale. We retooled the lines to Tamale, built a bigger transmission line. My own constituency will build a bigger transmission line there. We had signed agreements. And we, this loan was not to be paid on government of Ghana books. It was to be paid by Greco from the profitability of Greco. As a result of that, there were certain ratios within the books of Greco that if we maintain, Greco will be seen as capable of self-financing that project and pay it off. Mm. You know what happened? These people came, they abandoned the project. And they were all over shouting, power no doors do power no doors do excess capacity, excess capacity. Ah! Now where is the excess capacity? Where is it? You know that our power needs are said that every year you must add almost 12 to 13% additional generation capacity in order to stay at the same level. And if for seven years, You've not been adding, that is over 100%. It means that the capacity you had is being depleted by 100%. This one, too, you won't come and ask us mm. to tell you. We have the best brains in the energy sector mm -hmm. in the country. They are there. Professor Kwabna Donko, uh, Dr. Kwabna Donko is roaming mm. there. 
uh, 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 my younger brother, Jinapo. They're all over the place. I see. And but, yet, this so, will keep fighting. So today, uh -huh. today, what is happening to Greco is in a loss. What is happening to ECG? They've qualified the accounts. What is happening to VRA? They are in a loss. We are not even paying the gas, the gas that John Mahama built the plant to support but, but, the but, energy I mean, sector. But the we are not even paying. That has paid some amount to, to the who? IPPs, especially, Where? Where? Uh, except one of them. They've who? come to an agreement. They have, they've paid off. They are still paying. You know. So ask them where is the 4.3 billion arrears coming from? Ask them if they have been paying the IPPs. Mm. Where are they accumulating the the arrears? The 4.35 billion I mentioned. It is IPPs. But one thing we can rejoice, uh, you know, about is our trade surplus, can't we? Trade surplus. Uh, yes. Uh, the that, what, did they, what did they do? The about? government. The government announces that, uh, you know, they, they they have seen improved trade surplus of 1.4 billion U.S. dollars, driven by strong growth in remittances, as the reforms in the fintech ecosystem start to yield positive results. Um, and so it, it would appear ah. that our trade, so trade, our trade balance so, sheet so ask yourself, has improved. Trade, ask yourself, trade surplus mm -hmm. is driven by remittances? Is that what they said? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what they say, on external sector development. And I'm saying that you cannot have trade surplus coming from remittances. Trade surplus is about goods, physical goods you have mm. traded. Do you trade remittances? You see, when they are even lying, they are not smart about it. They are not even smart about it. You know where they are getting it from? Because John Mama led them three, gave them three FPSOs. Eh? Right. Which started generating a lot of forex. Okay? We started experiencing for the first time mm -hmm. trade surplus in 2016. For the first time. After we brought on stream those programs. But, so but, why? Because but, but they don't want to. The first because they don't. Want, I'm saying that because they don't want to say that. How can you be talking about trade surplus and you are talking remittances and it, you are you are also listening to them? No, but I'm saying that this will not be the first time that we are seeing this in the latest trade report. And I forget. <laughs> I, I forget. Who trade report is remittances trade. Uh, uh, that that trade report. We also saw that indeed government had had a trade surplus instead of a deficit. I'm and asking I think you, that was authored by the Ghana Statistical Service. I'm asking you a simple question. Mm -hmm. Do you find remittances in trade, so, in, trade, in, in trade report? Does it not play a role in our... Uh, remittances in, have nothing in, to in, do... In, in our coverage of... Uh, remittances have nothing to do with trade statistics. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are unrequited transfers. So for a finance minister to come and be telling you that He's, he registered trade surplus on account of remittances. And he's still sitting there earning salary. I mean, Adam, where did you learn that? That trade surpluses are generated from remittances. The minority in parliament is not calling on his uh, flag bearer to debate. Uh, after so much from the other side, courting him to come to a debate with the NPP's flag bearer. You are rather asking the NPP's flag bearer to come and debate you in parliament. Why? You see, uh, 2020, were you here or you traveled? I was here. Akufado was a flag bearer. Mm -hmm. He refused to debate, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ask him questions? What has changed? So, the man that has failed so woefully, his political career is on the doldrums. You want to rely on the credibility of John Mahama to revive your career. But, Omiya, it won't happen today. Even if John Mahama decides he's going, we'll stop him. You know why? How do you go and debate with somebody who is a champion in life? Somebody without credibility. He will lie through his teeth. Eh? And you will be there. He won't even give you the chance to talk. He will be there like... But if that's need the, the press, case, you people, you are looking for him. If, if that is the case, mm. why don't you then debate him and expose the lies? Is that the only, is that the only forum you can tell Ghanaians your policies? Well, that would be, a, you know... No, uh, no. Uh, As people say, no, a mano, a mano no, 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 encounter. No, no, no. no. We a are saying that... Encounter, that a one-on-one -on -one encounter. We are saying that Baumia damaged himself mm -hmm. and ceased to qualify to ever be debating John Mama. John Mama is at a certain pedestal. A man of integrity, a man of valor, a man of delivery. Okay? What you see is what you get. You want us to taint this, this pedigree with a liar, so, with somebody without credibility. What would be the difference <laughs> if he comes to parliament to debate you? Uh, he, he used to follow Ken Oforata there and was always nodding to so those damaging policies that have brought us here. He was nodding at them. You remember? 
He was the one nodding and saying that, yeah, 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 yeah. No knowing there were the policies that were going to damage our economy. And when Mnelli started getting damage in 2019, he disappeared. So he should come back in. He should come and be nodding at Amin Anta getting the disgrace mm. for the economic policies he has championed. What I'm saying is that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is very talented at lying. Jomama doesn't have but, that life. But, but I, 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 you know, I, I finally, just before <laughs> we go, right. We've seen the numbers. <clears throat> we've seen the staff report from the IMF. But there is a nation of a people. Are lives getting better by the end of this fiscal year? Or we are looking at going deeper in, in, in the rabbit hole we find ourselves? When you are a government and you find yourself in the situation that we are and you are delivering arguably your, first, your last most important fiscal statement, you must have seminar points. You must have game-changing moments. You must have moments where people say, wow, I didn't see this coming. You finished and left, and nobody is discussing it. In fact, in Parliament, there are people around away from debating. Can you imagine that I was giving five minutes to debate that budget? Mm. A ranking member giving five minutes. What? Members will now be giving one minute. Because they know. They know that they are running away from the debate. Will our lives get better? Will the ordinary Ghanaian be better? Pray for the next six months. But the good thing that will happen is that 7th January, 2025, your prayers will be answered. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. My guest has been Bogatanga Central MP and uh, Finance Committee Ranking Member Isaac Adungo. If you missed our encore encounter, you can uh, watch us again on our social media platforms. I'm Kemeni. This has been Hot Issues. Bye-bye.